Hello and welcome to Wheel of Wounds. This segment of Wound Rounds Live is a little playful. We actually are going to have some audience participation. We are going to use Wheel of Wounds to introduce our clinical segment where we will discuss algorithms and management strategies for a type of wound. With me to help me pick the wound tonight is my lovely assistant, the Vanna of Wounds, Sharon. Hi, Jeff. How are you this evening? I am fine, Sharon, and thank you so much for participating tonight. We do have a contestant out there that has submitted a wound type. Can you we tell do. me that name? We do, and his name is Donnie Fisher from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right, Donnie, this is your big chance to win an offering from Web CME. Sharon, are you ready to spin? I'm ready. Good luck, Donnie. And around and around we go. We don't know which wound it's going to step on, do we? But yeah. diabetic foot ulcer. All right. Donnie, you are a winner. Congratulations. The wound type selected on Wheel of Wounds was the diabetic foot ulcer. Let's look a little more closely at the management of a patient with a diabetic foot ulcer. These patients are clearly compromised from a healing standpoint. Many are obese, most have diabetes. Let's take a look at changing trends in the United States. Diabetes correlates very closely with obesity. And you can see the changes across the United States decade by decade. As the map becomes more red, the incidence of diabetes is increasing, closely correlating with the increase in diabetes. Now these patients clearly are compromised from a wound healing standpoint. We talk that many are obese, Many of them then develop diabetes. Diabetics are at extreme risk for peripheral arterial, peripheral vascular disease, and this correlates very closely with tissue hypoxia, the root of all evil for these patients with diabetic wounds. Tissue hypoxia places them at risk for amputation and other complications. The incidence of uh, amputation in this diabetic population is significant. Nearly 80,000 amputations, non-traumatic, in this group were reported several years ago. And this cor correlates very closely with the marked increase in healthcare expenditures for these patients. Let's talk about what happens when that patient with diabetic foot ulcer comes into our clinic. We give them a complete assessment. We perform a very detailed history looking at etiology, past medical history, surgical interventions, nutritional history. We also perform a detailed physical examination. Yes, focusing on the wound, but one thing that is often forgotten in these patients is the evaluation of their arterial peripheral vascular disease. This needs to be interrogated and assessed diligently if we are going to manage these patients well. Diabetic ulcers are caused primarily by neuropathy and arterial vascular disease. Let's look at each of these etiological factors a little more closely. First, neuropathy. Neuropathy results when there is damage to the perineural tissues. This likely results from glycosylated compounds and a decrease in blood supply to these tissues. Many diabetics have no feeling in their foot, as exemplified by this patient. He clearly could not feel the ulceration deteriorating to gangrenous change at the plantar aspect of his foot. We need to be very aggressive in assessment of neuropathy through Symes-Weber testing, vibration testing, uh, and other technologies. Peripheral arterial occlusive disease is evident on both a macrovascular as well as a microvascular standpoint. Arterial occlusive disease, we see this taking place at both a macrovascular as well as a microvascular standpoint. Diabetics may show accelerated disease below the knees. And clearly, diabetics who smoke have hypertension or have hyperglycemia have an acceleration of this peripheral arterial disease. We need to be very aggressive in our assessment of vascular disease, starting with a physical examination, leading to non-invasive tests such as ankle brachial indices, transcutaneous oximetry, and skin perfusion pressure analysis. Many of these patients will require a formal duplex ultrasonography, and some will go on to formal angiography for potential intervention. We need to manage this patient from a global standpoint, paying very strict attention to their glycemic control. We discuss the vascular assessment and interrogation where appropriate. We need to pay very strict attention to bio burden management. These patients clearly at risk for infection. We need to be aggressive in our offloading and then think about advanced modalities 
whenever the standard basic elements of wound care have not caused an improvement or healing of that ulcer. There was a consensus panel a few years ago that spoke to us about how to incorporate advanced technologies into the management of diabetic foot ulcers. So this consensus panel provided some very important conclusions and they left us with guidelines to allow us to enhance our management of patients with diabetic foot ulcer patients. Regarding advanced therapies, it was their suggestion that we use a four-week evaluation point. Patients that have not decreased wound area by at least 50% at four weeks should be considered candidates for advanced technologies and therapies.